computers and smartphones and cars, yet we often forget where it all comes from. Now we will get a behind-the-scenes view into this market and the impact it has had on our society. Please welcome Cameron. Good afternoon. So, if you know me, you know I'm not the most talkative guy. If I have something to say, I'll certainly say it, but I don't typically spring at the opportunity to make a fool of myself. And uh, so, for those of you, it may surprise you as much as it surprises me that I'm here talking to you today, but I'm here for a reason. So, TED is about spreading ideas and the amazing things that can happen when we put our minds together. But, you know, the way that people seem to be doing that nowadays is with technology. And that's a pretty broad term, but I think you can probably infer from the context what I mean when I say that. You know, computers, tablets, touchscreen refrigerators at this point. I mean, it, it, it's crazy. Even just reading the front page of a tech news site can sound insane. You know, with titles like, you know, the, the lowdown on high-flying drones and this gaming wearable helps relieve back pain. I mean, what does that even mean? <laughs> how is any of this stuff connected? And in this generation, there are kids making more money than their parents by writing apps and making YouTube videos, and that's something we haven't seen before. So when we look at history, we see patterns and differences in perspective and culture, but that's something we really haven't seen before. It's something entirely new. And that's really what's at the core of it all. I mean, we're the internet generation. We've grown up in a world where a few keystrokes and a couple of milliseconds can yield millions of pages and thousands of years worth of human knowledge. And that's really incredible, especially when we take it in perspective and we look at what that allows us to do. And, you know, with all that at our fingertips, you'd think we'd be known for, say, more than selfies and being stupid, right? But, <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's a hard thing. And obviously, older generations persecute younger generations a lot. And 21st century technology focuses on a mindset, and that's a mindset of a meritocracy, where if you really care about something, and you have a passion for what you do, you can advance, and you can, you can go without power limitations and build these amazing things like the internet. And that's what's given us access to all of these things. And if everyone were to adopt that sort of thinking, I think, say, teenagers, for example, would get more credit for the intellectual feats that they've achieved, including those of the ones here speaking to you today. So, I mean, what goes into a selfie, for instance? You know, 200 years of photographic technology, 40 years of touchscreen capacitance studies, a decade of digital image processing software, six years of social media website development, and the construction of a robust mobile internet infrastructure? Uh, that sounds pretty impressive to me, but uh, of course, none of us had anything to do with that, right? Or did we? Because, you know, what's the use of a social media site without its users? How can you connect with the world if no one's listening? And, I mean, what's up then? And if we don't want to attribute it to the ages-old pattern of older generations persecuting younger generations, we can look at, say, maybe they're jealous of youth. I mean, who wouldn't be, right? Or maybe they're scared, because they had no way to make more money than their parents. And, but then again, their parents didn't have access to the things that they did, say, like disposable calculators and portable music, and their parents' parents didn't even have access to desegregated schools or good refrigeration. When you look at it from a perspective, it, it's hard to understand why, but it, one day we'll be afraid of our own children and the new world that they're growing up in and the advances that they will bring, and that's a scary thing. It, but it's not something to be ashamed about, but it's something to consider, especially in the way that we present ourselves to society and the way that we estimate our own abilities in this globalized world. And, I mean, globalized world, that's, that's another blanket term, right? But I have a specific meaning in mind when I say that. And we've lived in this globalized world, if you want to call it that, for quite a long time now. We're aware of not only ourselves and those that are around us, but also those that we cannot see. And because of that, the internet has made us unable to turn away from both the atrocities and the miracles in other parts of the world. So when we look at the differences between each other and we notice the, 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 our own strengths and we estimate our self-worth, we, we notice that you know, we have to sort of adapt the way that we think of ourselves to society. And we have to go on no matter what that is. So this is the 21st century, and we're all growing up in it, all of us. And for those of us who aren't already, we'll soon be legal adults in this world, trying to make a name for ourselves and succeed in any way that we possibly can. So you know, when that time comes, remember the technology mindset. Because what's important is sometimes obscured by the present. 
and the present is just a world full of crazy people with drones and internet connected doorbells. And so, you know, the, honestly, the world and the internet, it connects us, but it, it's not something that's going away. It's not something to take for granted, though, because it's something without a pattern to go by. And because of that, sometimes we have to adjust our own thinking and put ourselves in a larger perspective of history to understand what we're really dealing with. Thank you.